It's not every day the ClickHouse Merge Tree Table Engine family gets a new member. So when it does, it's worth a video. The new coalescing merge tree engine is designed for partial row updates. So as with other merge tree tables, data is created in parts and then in the background it's merged. And with this table at merge time, it replaces all the rows with the same sorting key with one row that contains the latest non-null values for each column. So that's useful when you want to efficiently retain only the most complete version of each entity or each row. You're okay with eventual on-disk consolidation of the data, which will happen during those background merges. And then finally, you want to avoid full row overwrites like what happens with the replacing merge tree and just fill in missing values. Let's walk through an example of how it works. So imagine we're capturing telemetry data about an electric car. Now that data is spread across various subsystems in the car. So we might have the battery reporting its charge, the GPS module reporting the location, the software updater reporting firmware, and then sensors periodically updating the temperature and the speed of the car. So we want to combine these incremental sparse updates into a complete per vehicle view. So if we go through an example, so we've got our columns uh, along the top and imagine our first update comes in and it's got our battery reading of 82 and then we've got the firmware version as well. We then get another update. So this is from the GPS system. So we've got our lat and long locations. Then comes in a third row, which is the cabin temperature and the speed. And then finally, we get an update on the battery. So the battery's now been used a bit and it's down to 78. And what we want to see is when we query this particular vehicle, we want to see the latest version of all those. So for lat and long, there's only one value. For firmware, one value. For cabin temperature and sp speed, only one value. But then battery, we want it to take the latest value, which is 78. So let's have a look at how to do that in ClickR. So we've got this query here that's going to create a table called electric vehicle state. So we've got all those fields that we saw on the previous diagram. And then we've got an extra one called last update. So that's going to capture the time that the row was updated. The engine is coalescing merge tree. And then we've got our order by key or our sorting key is VIN. So that's going to be the one that stays kind of stable. And then the other ones are going to be changing. So imagine we get our first inserts. So this is for the initial battery and firmware readings. And then you can see we've got null for all the other values. And remember, the VIN needs to be there every time. Now, if we do a select star from electric vehicle state, sorting by the last update, we get back that individual row. So we can see we've got the VIN, we've got the battery, lat, long or null, firmware is there, camera temperature and speed are null. Let's say then we get our second entry. So this is GPS data has been reported a bit later. Again, we've got the VIN, null, and then we've got the lat, long values and then nulls for the rest. And so if we then do the query, you can see that it comes back with two rows. And the reason that we've got two rows is because the background merge hasn't happened yet. So this is just the state that it was created in. One way that we could use to query is we can use the arg max function. And we're going to basically get back each column and then last update, so i.e. the latest version of it. And it sort of goes through and you can see if we run that query, we get back the latest values that we've got everywhere. Now, the limitation of doing it like this is that all rows must be scanned every time. And the aggregation is being computed on the fly every time as well. So this would be the way to achieve the same sort of thing, even using a merge tree table underneath. An alternative way to do it is we can do select star from electric vehicle state and use the final clause instead. And what that does is it applies the merge logic in memory, but not on the disk. And you see now we get back just one row with the latest non-null value for each. Let's add in some more rows. So say the sensor update comes in with the temperature and the speed, and then we get that battery drop to 78%. This time when we query that electric vehicle state table without any final in there, you can see we've got four rows. Again, the merge hasn't happened yet. And if we then add in the final, you can see all the fields are filled in now. If you want to see what happens when the merge actually happens, we can do optimize table and then the table name. And then we can actually write a query directly against the table without that final clause. And it gets back just the completed row with the latest non-null values for each one. So hopefully you're going to find some good uses for this new table engine. If you want to learn about the replacing merge tree engine that we mentioned earlier, check out this video next.